just get something down that's light and bright, has a bit of chroma in it. Again, this is just a guess, and it will be changed later, but just to get something down. There. <clears throat> you know, I know it's wrong, but now it's like starting from. So then I'm going to start blocking in the, um, the planes. Remember I saw the planes of the head? Which if you know your anatomy, you'll see it. So you can see the forehead, the light is directly in front of him, right? So that front plane is very light, and then there's two side planes that turn away. So you can see that, actually, if you look for it, right? So that's your job as a painter, is to describe these, these planes. So <clears throat> I'll start off with my, my kind of base flesh color, and then I can test it out. It's still pretty light. So if I move over to the red umber, the red umber is a, a darker flesh color. I just got these glasses, actually, so the progressives. So I'm not sure how they use them. So that's you know, a little bit dull, so I need to, to bump up the chroma. So there's two things I'm looking for with colors. Uh, chroma value, which is how light or how dark it is, right? You mean just red umber with white or the No, red umber and white and a little bit of my dark flesh color here, that orange. Uh -huh. yeah. Because the red umber by itself is a bit dull, a little bit too dull. Do you mean like primarily on the base coat and glazing? Sorry? You do the base coat and glazing, right? Do you do any kind of growth process after the Probably later, yeah. Yeah. Even when it's dry. Yeah. And then on this side too, I'm gonna just try and get some color down. So it, it, these are all guesses at the beginning. It's like until you have what we used to say when you're in school, it's like nothing's right till everything's right. So you just keep keep refining. Mm -hmm. And your guesses of course get better as you So let's say there's my uh, my three foreheads, my three planes of the forehead. Um, I'll go back down here now and, and block in. Let's just put some of this stuff in here too. <coughs> Some of the, uh, the, the front plane here of his face. And I'm just gonna, it'll look like a spider web, web of colors after a while. And always working with the best brush. So they used to say in, in the academy in the 19th century, they say take your biggest brush possible and go two sizes bigger so that you're not forced, because students always want to go and like start picking at details. And that's the way we're made, we, we're made to see details. So as a painter, you need to see the bigger picture, the simplification first. So using a big brush, even bigger than this. What size is that? Uh, this is a nine, but you know, they're all different depending on the brand. Mm -hmm. So this is okay, it could be a bit bigger, but um, yeah, it just forces me then to, to um, not do details. Right? Yeah, I'll just put that there. Bit red, bit reddish. But again, like there's, there's so much going on in there. There's so many colors. What red is that there? The one I just mixed up. Uh, yeah, for the face. This one. Mm -hmm. It's uh, oh, it's a bunch of colors. Um, it's red umber, a bit of burnt umber, tiny bit of red uh, of that um, Persian red I was telling you about. Uh -huh. You know, then of course, there's the turning plane. This little bit here is going to be, you can see it's a bit grayer, so I'm going to bump over to the, to the um, raw umber, which is a really gray color. Maybe a bit too gray. That's too warm. Not too red, so. So I'm just comparing like how dark that is. So I said there's your value, then there's your chroma, so how light or, or how bright or how dull it is. And then there's a the hue, which is what we call color. It's red, it's green, it's blue. Okay. Yeah. Is 
missing a SIM card up here, let's see. <clears throat> and then on the other side, it's, quite, it's, it's closer to the light, and it's also very red. I mean, these colors are all very similar, so his nose, I'll make it a little bit, obviously the nose is going to be a bit redder than usually the cheeks. Generally, a general move on the colors, the forehead's a bit more yellow, the middle of the face is a bit more red, and then the bottom on a male is a bit more gray because of the bearding, right? Of course, here we don't have that, but, but even a little bit on female, too. Don't play up the gray on a female if you have trouble. Or tell you. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to do the nose. So I'm going to bump the chroma up on that nose a bit. So this uh, Persian red I'm using is really quite evident in his skin too. So again, I'm not really worrying too much about specificity of shapes. I'm just trying to get colors in. So this kind of bumping back and forth between being specific to being more general, you get that kind of play. It, makes, it gives a bit of life to your painting, I think. Um, something that is really easy to do with a, a model, but with a, uh, if you're painting from a photograph, it's harder to get that. So it's always nice to play to have a model to paint from. Because then you also get that, you just, you know, that's the great art of portraiture, obviously, right? So. <clears throat> so I'm just kind of blocking this top lip here as best guess color. <coughs> Some of these turning tones here, the brow would be good to get in. Again, these are very, very red, right? So this is this palette. This palette is designed for, for European people. That warm, that warm kind of skin color. <clears throat> this needs to be a little darker. So as the form turns, it's getting a bit grayer. So I'm moving. I'm mixing colors more from this side as I get darker and grayer, because these colors are darker and grayer. <coughs> and then here. Yeah. No, it's too dark. Persian red that I've been telling you about is, is really powerful. You can see it just kind of stays everywhere. <clears throat> and let's start blocking in some hair. And what brand is Persian red? Um, that is Old Holland. But you can also get it from Windsor Newton. It's a mm -hmm. common color. Mm -hmm. Right, so this hair is uh, well, I mean, just gray and uh, gray, right? So black and burnt umber will give you a pretty good hair color.
make it too blue, because black is blue, blue, it's very cool. You want to make sure you have enough um, of the raw umber in it to warm it up. Paint over the brown. Does that alter your gray? But when I paint over the, the brown? Yeah, like the auburn. There. Oh, um, yeah, but not much. Yeah, hey. yeah, it kind of get mixes together and mm -hmm. you'll adjust it later anyway. So yeah. kind of blends together. Yeah. yeah, it definitely blends together. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I mean, this is a warm. His hair is, you know, it's a warm mm -hmm. gray, right? So yeah. mixing it with that brown is good. Mm -hmm. These colors I have, like. Making them uh, warmer, so is that the, the raw brown bumping over to the burnt umber because it's a, even a bit warmer? It's almost like you're taking advantage of that. Eh? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it seems like uh, the burnt umber, the little bit of black in it is the color I need for mm -hmm. this hair. It's quite warm. So here is just burnt umber and black. Not burnt the umber, a little bit of raw umber, and then black, yeah. But, you know, black, black and white by itself is too cold, so I added a bit of raw umber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It warmed it up, but it still wasn't warm enough, so bump over to the burnt umber and that it's like yeah, okay. Which is the beauty of the palette, right? It's like you just haven't hit that note, so move over a bit and see if you can get it. What would be the proportions of oil and the thinner no, turpentine? No. In this case, uh, it's about one third turpentine or mineral spirits, and uh -huh. one two thirds of oil. But uh, th for this, it's just a kind of a rough guess, right? Mm -hmm. You could use straight oil. Um, <clears throat> at least if it dries and I want to work on it on top, I can have I can add a little bit of a richer medium, so less turpentine. 
want to. Five minutes. Ah, thank you. Do you use the same method when you're drawing with pencil or chalk as well? Like go big and start going small to detail? A charcoal probably you could, yeah. Um, he asked if I use the same method when I'm painting with charcoal or pencil. Um, I will for like the initial stuff, but usually with a pencil you're usually trying to define shapes. So it's less of this kind of blocking in thing and more of like, say drawing where the eyes are and nose are and then actually drawing the shape itself rather than kind of Scumbling it in. A brush painting is just more, using the brushes, you know, more um, attuned to that kind of rough, mm -hmm. big thing. Yeah. Whereas drawing with a sharp point, it's not as, doesn't lend itself to that, right? Charcoal could, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's a daylight bulb like that one. Yeah. Is that your light? Your studio light? This one? Yeah. Uh, I bought it just to do stuff like this. Yeah. Um, but you can use it for for studio. Yeah. You, um, yeah. So that you want to Yeah. This is like yeah, fifteen bucks. Oh, is that where you got it? And you just put a daylight bulb in. Yeah. Right you can use it for the model too. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's worth the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's take a break. This is probably a good place to, to stop for now. Yeah, it's like, rating is always the same. So, like, even this, it's like a, it's kind of a spot, so it's lighter than it is. But the, 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 the account 